On behalf of our pastor, Elder Eugene C. McCowney Jr., leaders and members, welcome and thank you for joining us. I would like to take this time to encourage you to join us for our early morning prayer calls. Mornings are so special. They're a special part of our day because they signify the beginning of something new, a new day to love God greatly and do better. We have prayer on Tuesdays at 7 a.m., Wednesdays at 5.30 a.m., Thursdays at 7 a.m., and Fridays at 7 a.m., all Eastern Standard Time. We are in prayer. Take the time to dial in to the number on the screen below and join us in prayer. It is the most special time of the day because it means we are making God a priority and giving Him our most precious time. We would love for you to also connect with us. Visit our website at www.praisecentercogic.org. That's www.praisecentercogic.org for church, ministry, church information and ministry information. We would like for you to also subscribe to our YouTube channel at Praise Center Church of God in Christ. Friend us on Facebook, at Praise Center VA and follow us on Instagram and Twitter at Praise Center VA. Here at Praise Center, we have been commissioned with empowering believers and changing lives. We accomplish this through love, prayer, praise, and discipleship. We are on a mission to build the kingdom of Christ. God bless you. For us to be able to see another day thank you for your goodness thank you for your mercy thank you for your grace and unmerited favor thank you for your love oh god today hallelujah i will love you forever i will worship for you forever i will magnify you forever because god there is absolutely no one that's like you god you are an awesome god you are a mighty wonder no one can compare to you god so we love on you oh god this morning right where we stand right where we're at we love on you god because you first loved on us when we were not worthy of your love, when we were not justified because of your grace, you still rendered it unto us. You still gave it unto us. And God, we just want to tell you thank you on today. Thank you for another chance to say yes. Thank you for another opportunity to give it to you, the glory and the honor and the praise. You are a wonderful God and a wonderful Savior. And so, Father, we pray that the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart will be acceptable in thy sight. For, Lord, you are my strength and you are my redeemer. I'm absolutely nothing without you. It's in you that I live and move and have my very being. Put flesh under subjection. Cast the devil out of the minds even now. You've come to free us today. You've come to liberate us, oh God, today. They that worship you must worship you in spirit and in truth. And so we lift our hands in the sanctuary, God, and we bless your name, God, for you're worthy to be praised. You're worthy to be adored. You're worthy to be magnified. Lord, we love you. Lord, there's no one like you. There's no one that loves me the way that you do. No one who cares for me the way that you do. You're a good, good father. You're an awesome wonder. You are mighty God. You are the King of kings. You are the Lord of lords. And we bless you even now. And we glorify you, God. I love you forever, forever, Lord. Be blessed and be glorified this morning as we do your will. As we make your name glorious in this place, come no more and have your way even now, God. Move by your power. Move by your spirit. Move by your might, God, even now. Get the glory. Yes, God, we want you to get the glory. Be glorified, be magnified, and be adored. It's in the mighty and matchless name of Jesus Christ. We pray, we say thank God, amen, and amen. If you love him. If there's no God like your God, come on, let's magnify him and glorify him right where we're at, whether you're online or you're in the house. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Hallelujah. And let us exalt his name together. Hallelujah. We serve a great God. We serve an awesome God. We serve a mighty God. He's been good. Yes, he has. He's been better than good. Hallelujah. He's been better than better can good can be. And we thank
thank you, God, this morning. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to your name. We thank God for the worship that's in the house. And we pray that God's will will be done. Turn with me quickly to the book of Ephesians. Chapter 5, we'll be reading verses 15 through 20. Ephesians, the epistle of Paul that he wrote to the church at Ephesus. Ephesians chapter 5, we'll be reading verses 15 through 20. And the word of the, of the Lord declares in the book of Ephesians chapter 5 verses 15 through 20. See then that ye walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time because the days are evil. Wherefore be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. And be not drunk with wine wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord, giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord on this morning. Wherefore, be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. This is the word of God. Let all of the people say amen. If you've been with us at any point in time in the year of 2021, and we're now on our fourth Sunday in this year, and even if you began back with us in December as we went through our 31 days of prayer, you would have no doubt and understanding that this is the year to seize the moment. And thus far in 2020, over these past couple of Sundays, we've covered three topics. And I want to make sure that you're able to follow us along as we continue forward uh, to lay the foundation for our theme of, uh, of seizing the moment. First, we laid our foundational uh, a block building block. To everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven. Our theme scripture of Ecclesiastes 3 and 1. It helped us to understand that we no longer have time to waste. I hope you all have gotten that in your mind. 2020 made sure to let us know that time is of the essence and we no longer have time to waste. But we as the people of God must be about our father's business. We must take back everything that we've allowed the enemy to steal from us. And we must be determined to walk worthy of the vocation wherewith we have been called. That was our foundational building block for our theme of Seize the Moment. The next building block that we covered was priorities, priorities, priorities. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto you. Those that are seeking after only fishes and those that are only seeking after the loaves miss the mark because we know that God will provide all of these things unto us. But for those that have been called out of darkness into us marvelous light, God has so much more for you than just mercy and grace and unmerited favor. He has something great in store for us. And if God is not our priority, then we miss the mark and we miss out on the greatest things that God has in store for us. The third building block that we covered last week was relationships are greater than the resources. But ye shall seek me and find me when ye shall search for me with all your heart. Again, God can supply all of our needs, but it's God is looking after the relationship. God is not looking at uh, the resources. So this morning, as we continue in this series on Seize the Moment to lay these foundational blocks so that we can launch forth out into the deep in the year of 2021, uh, the fourth block that we would like to cover on this morning is understanding God's will. Understanding God's will. 
as you are writing, I want you to write this simple statement down. Those that are joining us on social media, whether on Facebook or YouTube or Twitter, I want you to write this down in the screen as well, in the chat window. Window. It's impossible. It's impossible to seize the moment without understanding God's will for your life. It's absolutely impossible to seize the moment without understanding God's will for your life. If you don't catch anything else, I want you to catch hold of that, that you must be willing to understand the will of God for your life. I must admit, you all people of God that are in the house and those that are online today, I must admit meant that understanding God's will is not always an easy thing to do. The Bible declares and tells us that in our flesh dwelleth no good thing. And I don't know about you, there's a war that, that's going on in my flesh. I constantly find myself warring against the things that my flesh desires to do, but the spirit man won't allow me to do because the spirit is stronger or more mightier in me than the flesh that dwells inside of me. But I've come to the conclusion because the word of God has given me understanding that, that helps me to understand why I don't always understand the will and the plans that God has for my life. Isaiah chapter 55 verses 8 through 9 declares and explains why we don't understand. It declares for my thoughts are not your thoughts Jesus God said. Neither are your ways my ways said the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth so are my ways higher than yours and my thoughts than your thoughts. It's amazing to me that sometimes we think that we should be able to know what God is thinking. Uh, we expect God to do what we want him to do. We expect God to do the things that we think are right. We expect God to move when we tell God to move. So we expect to know the thoughts that God is thinking towards us. But no matter how much we think that God uh, should do what we think, we don't even understand what we all are doing. We don't understand what the people that we're standing next to, that we worship with, that we go into work with, we don't all the time understand what they're thinking thinking on their own. How do you know that, Pastor? It's simple. No matter how blatantly obvious the foolishness that we saw coming out of the White House over the last four years of our lives, do you not know that 74 million people voted to bring that foolishness back and allow the evil and the uh, pervasiveness and the, uh, uh, the lack of unity to come out of his mouth and the evil that he was spewing? They wanted four more years of that same old thing. It's amazing, but I don't understand how someone can do and agree with the spirit. And it's not just those that are of the world because we expect the world to be the world. Amen. We expect the world to be foolish. But of those 74 million, many of them, millions of them were believers that proclaimed that Jesus is Lord. I'm not, I'm not preaching on that today, but it's hard for me to understand. It's hard for me to understand uh, why people can't understand that systemic racism has been pervasive in America and across the world um, that has caused people of color, people that are, are less fortunate, people that are not in the hierarchy to be able to experience life and that they're more abundantly. We, it took a long time uh, for an African American person to be more than three-fifths of a human being. I don't know what they saw. Was it that we didn't have enough arms and we couldn't be considered a whole person? Were we missing two legs and we could not have? Were we missing ears or what were we missing that we could not be classified as an entire human being for years in America? I don't understand. But people are cool with separate but equal. When equal with separate was never equal. I, I, I'm not, this is not, I'm not going into that on today. But I, it's hard for us to understand. I'm talking about people that we live with, that we live next to, that we communicate on a day-to-day -day basis. It's hard to always understand what's going on in their mind. I've been married for 20 years. 
and she's not in here, so that's good. I've been married for 20 years, and sometimes I still don't always understand what Lady Yo is thinking. I know her tendencies. I know what she likes to do, but sometimes there are situations where I don't always understand the decisions or the choices that she is making. Sometimes it's just simply hard to understand. Life's turns. Life's obstacles, life's difficulties, life's challenges, they're often hard to understand. Death that comes when it does not, when it's irrelevant of age, because it's just not those that are seasoned, that have been here for an extended period of time, are passing away now, but the young are passing away as well. Young are suffering deaths that are mysterious and not understandable. We don't always understand death. We don't understand sickness. We don't understand life and so Simply put, life in general is hard to understand. One day is hot. One day this week it was 62 degrees. Then the next day it went all the way back down into the 20s. Life in general is hard to understand. And what happens is when we don't understand, it causes us to question God. God, what are your plans for me? God, what is your will for my life? God, why do I have to go through these difficulties? Why do I have to go through these pains? Why do I have to go through these challenges that come my way? In our Sunday school lesson on this morning, Minister Stan brought up an awesome scripture. Turn with me to uh, Psalms 138 and 8. Turn with me quickly to Psalms 138 and 8. When we wonder why we go through, and I, this is just a little detour that I want to put in because I believe it's, uh, it's important for us to understand that God's will for us is that we might live. He said, I've come that you might have life and that you might have life that there more abundantly. For us to be able to understand God's will and, and seize the moment, we've got to be able to stand on scriptures like this, the word of God that will lead us and that will guide us and direct us. Psalm 138 and 8 declares the Lord will perfect that which concerneth me. I don't want you to go into, uh, let's keep going. Thy mercy, O Lord, endureth forever. Forsake not thy works of thine own hands. What Paul, I mean, what David was simply saying is that God is able to complete what he has begun in you. The trials and the tribulations and the circumstances that have come into your life, they're there just to work together for your good. If you would have never had trouble, if you would have never had sickness, if you would have never had pain you would have never learned that God was a redeemer you would have never known that God is a way maker you would have never figured out that God was a strong power you would have never come to the understanding that there is absolutely nothing that God cannot do that God can do anything but fail you've got to go through some things some storms in your life so that you can understand that God has all power in his hands and not only does God have all power in his hands he can speak those things that are not as though they were. You may see trouble. You may see storms. You may see the billows roll, but God sees you perfected. God sees you stronger. God sees you more mightier because you've been through and God has been able to perfect the work that he has begun inside of you. How do we go forward, pastor? How do we continue to march on? How do we continue to press forward when it seems like life is getting the best of us. It seems like things have been good, um, but trouble has begun to creep in unaware. It had been for an extended period of time that no one at the church had been affected by the coronavirus, and not just us, but our family members as well. But it's trying to creep in just a little bit. Missionary Miller has testified that God healed her, and we thank God for the healing, but recently we found out that, um, that her son got it, but again, we already declared the healing is already done. My my aunt was affected. Aunt Vera has been recently affected, and we're still walking by faith and not by sight. But these trials and these deviations from peace just reminds us that we've got to look unto God, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. We've got to look to God at all times. We've got to make sure that God is continuously in our focus because if we lose hold of keeping our focus in on God, we're going to miss the mark. 
And we're going to find ourselves out of God's will in the wrong place at the wrong time in the wrong position and that we will not attain and be able to seize the moment that God has for us. Look at this. I'm going to give you things that will tell you that this is God's will, but I need you to understand how you march forward, how you go forward so that God's will will be done in your life. Again, I declare um, that if you don't understand God's will you will never ever be able to seize the moment in these days in time it's impossible you can do all your planning isn't there a proverb said the man that plans to build without having the lord on his side mother give me that scripture i want the scripture that talks about the man that plans to build without god being a part of the plans give me that scripture but it simply says that if you make plans to build something and god is not in the plan god is not going to allow you to be successful in your planning. If all your planning doesn't include God, if all of your planning, if you don't consult God, if all of your planning and your dreams has nothing to do with God, then I'm here to tell you today you don't understand God's will for your life. Because God is the reason why you live. God is the reason why you move. God is the reason why you're able to do anything on this day. So look at this. Go with me back into Ephesians Chapter 5, verses 15, and, and Paul was talking to the people of God at the church of Ephesus uh, in this pagan nation, in the Roman nation. He was giving them an understanding of how they can understand God's will. If you take time to read Ephesians chapter 5, and I don't want you to read it right now, but he talked to us about being followers of God. And as we learn how to follow the word of God, then we'll separate ourselves. We'll move ourselves out of things that will cause us to be compromised, sanctified, set apart, and we'll be in line to be inside of the will of God. And those that are aligned with the will of God, those that are that are aligned, text it to me, my, oh, I'll get it, I'll get it, it'll come on my watch. Those that are aligned with the word of God, hallelujah, there we go, Psalm 127, read that when you get a when you get an opportunity but those that are in line with the word of God you'll be able to seize the moment and the opportunities that God will bring your way let's look at what he says in verse number 15 Ephesians chapter 5 verse 15 he says see then that ye walk circumspectly not as fools but as wise when you're preparing to seize the moment you've got to take your time You've got to make sure that you're not rushing to and fro because fools rush when they see an opportunity. Fools rush without consulting God. God, do I need to take that step forward? God, do I need to make that choice? God, do I need to make that decision? You've got to make sure that you walk circumspectly. You've got to walk worthy. The Bible declares that we should look to walk worthy of the vocation wherewith we have been called. You've got to watch where you walk. You've got to watch where you go. The Bible Bible declares that the steps of a good man are what? They're ordered by the Lord. And when you allow God to order your footsteps, you won't combat God. You won't challenge God for what he tells you to do. You won't question God for where he tells you to go because it says the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. And when God orders your footsteps, he says he delights in his ways. That means when God tells me to go left, guess what you are? I tell you, thank God, I'll go to the left. If God tells me to go to the right, I I tell you, okay, thank you, God. I go to the right. You've got to walk circumspectly, cautiously, prayerfully, that we've got to find ourselves always praying. Not as fools, but as wise. Someone that's a fool won't consult God, but someone that's wise will say, No, I'm going to do that first. I do that in the church today. People, for those that don't know, God has allowed me to be the chief operating officer for the Virginia First Jurisdiction under Bishop Mark Thomas. So a lot of people are coming to me to ask for questions and ask decisions. Guess what, you all? I'm just the COO. I'm not the boss. So I understand that, no, no, I can't answer that question. I walk circumspectly. A fool would say, oh, yeah, I've got me some power. I've got me some authority. Let me go ahead on and be the man because that's who I am, the man. But I'll put flesh under 
this objection, I tell that devil, go somewhere. I'm not being dumb. I'm not the top person. But a wise person said, no, let me make sure that I go talk to the leader and I'll get back with you. These are the things that you should be doing. We must first walk, work, walk, un, I mean, circumspectly to understand God's will. We've got to walk circumspectly. We've got to say, God, I know that you alone are God. God, I know that you can and I know that you will. And I know that you have the best interest for me every single day of my life. He goes on to say, redeeming the time in verse number 16, because the days are evil. That goes back to priority. Priorities, priorities, and priorities. And to everything, there is a time, a, a, a season, because time is of the essence. Ephesians 3 tells us there's a time to live and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to pluck up. It, it gives us time, a time to kill, a, a time to steal. It's a time for everything. So we've got to redeem our times. That means that we've got to take back and make sure that we use our time efficiently. Some of us are wasting time. Let me pause there a little bit and take a couple of more breaths. We waste too much time. We waste too much time looking at television. We waste too much time dealing with foolishness. We waste too much time living on social media. We waste too much time looking at the news. How do we say that you waste too much time? Because you put more time into things of this world and then you do into the things that are holy and the things that are godly. You'll never be able to understand God's will looking at CNN all day. You'll never be able to understand God's will looking at the fake prophets that are on Facebook prophesying and prophesying about things that don't even make sense and don't ever come to pass you'll never be able to seize the moment following instructions from people that have never done anything in their lives isn't it amazing you ain't never been married but you got so much advice about how it is to be married you ain't never been to school or you never got did any learning or any burning but you want to tell everybody how to go get their masters and go get their bachelors. You got people who've never been, never been a pastor, never dealt with leading a flock, never. But they got pastoral messages for you because they got a virtual congregation. They got people that they don't have to answer to. They got a people that don't know them and, and be able to go home to them. Uh, uh, God, we go and look for advice from people that have not done anything. You got to stop wasting your time. Because time is of the essence. And because time is of the essence, we're living in evil days. And the devil it comes to do what? He comes to steal. He comes to kill. And he comes to destroy. So when we really, when we want to understand God's will, we've got to walk circumspectly. We've got to redeem the times. But then we've got to make sure that we are not like those that are unwise. Wherefore, be, not, be ye not unwise, but understand the will, uh, what the will of the Lord is. Well, how do we understand what the will of the Lord is, Pastor? Well, verse 18 tells us, stop sipping and tipping. Stop making the, uh, the world your, your place of strength. Stop looking after the things of the world instead of looking after the things that are spiritual. He says, be not drunk with wine. We're in as excess. Stop. Television is not wrong. But if you spend more time on it than you do trying to make sure you get an opportunity to get a relationship with God, then it's too much. Then it's too much. Your phone is not bad. It comes in the handy. I thought I had my phone on me and told Mother Green to text me, but I put my phone on to the side because I didn't want it to be a distraction. But we allow things to become a distraction. But it tells us uh, don't allow yourself to be drunk in excess with things of this world. But be filled with the Spirit. When you're filled with the Spirit, the Spirit gives you guidance. The Spirit gives you direction. The Spirit also gives you correction. He tells you when you're wrong. He tells you when you said something in the wrong manner. It may not have been wrong in the words, but the way you did it was wrong. I love you. Uh, uh, you know, you're shaking, you're rolling your head, and your words weren't wrong, but your actions, your aura, the presentation that you give with it was wrong. So we've got to make sure that we are filled with the Spirit. Well, Lord, Pastor, how can we be filled with the Spirit? You've got to put that flesh under this objection. You've got to stop allowing your flesh to be satisfied. You've got to put down the phone. You've got to turn off the television. And you've got to go into a prayer corner and say, Lord, I need you the more today. 
Holy Spirit, come no more and have your way. I don't want anything else but you. Lord, I need you in the morning. I need you in the noonday. I need you when the sun goes down. You've got to let God know that you are the priority, that I need you more than anything else in this world. You've got to have a hunger and a thirst after righteousness to be filled with the Spirit of God. Speaking to yourselves in verse 19 with psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. Singing and making melody in your heart. Meaning what you got to do is that you got to get a mindset that God is all I need and more. Is there anybody else in the house that believes that God is all you want in, in life? I don't need anything else. Don't give me houses. Just give me Jesus. It seems like we keep going back to that statement over and over again. But it seems pertinent for you to seize the moment. Just give me Jesus. I don't need houses. I don't need land. I don't need a million men march. Just give me Jesus. I don't need any else because he is my healer he is my way maker he is my strong tower he is my deliverer he is the God that I can trust in so I, I make sure that he's always around me I sing melodies I sing praises I sing worship to God those that come and visit me at my house You'll often find me just walking around singing. I just sing and blurt out songs. My wife calls it a Tourette syndrome. Just all of a sudden, I'll just start singing. And it, it don't matter because there's something down on inside of me that I, that I cannot keep to myself. Ain't, it, ain't that what Jeremiah said? It's just like fire shut up in my bones. When I know who my redeemer is, when I know who my strong tower is, when I know who the lover of my soul is, I just can't keep it to myself. I got to, I've got to declare it, and I've got to worship him. The Bible declares, for they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. So we need God's spirit to work inside of us to help us to have a mindset to give, to make melody in our hearts unto the Lord. And then giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Paul told the church at Ephesus, these things will help you to understand God's will. Walk according to his word. Stand on his promises. And make sure that you make time and understand that time is of the essence. And be not as fools who think they got all the time in the world. You all got people that you know that think that they got all the time in the world to get it right. But guess what? Payday is coming after a while. Not just for those that are waiting for the reaping of good things, but those that are waiting to reap those things that are bad as well. Payday is coming after a while. So we've got to make sure that we redeem the times. I can redeem the time when the Spirit of God is leading me. The Spirit of God is directing me and guiding me. And when the Spirit of the Lord is inside of me, I can't help but to bless God. I can't help but to magnify Him. And I can't help but to give Him thanks for the Lord is good. His psalm writer said his mercy is unto everlasting and his truth endured through all generations. Get your pens and Bibles together. We're concluding now. It's God's will that the, we have these things. It's God's will that all men should be saved. That's the first thing we got to understand of uh, uh, God's will. As we walk circumspectly, as we redeem the times, as we make sure that we are filled with the Spirit of God, we first must understand that God's will is that everyone would be saved. Write down 2 Peter chapter 3, verse number. 2 Peter chapter 3 verse number 9 where the Bible declares this and makes this statement. It says according to Peter, the Lord is not slack concerning his promise as some men count slackward, slackness, but is long suffering to, I mean, to us were not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. God sent his only begotten son Jesus so that every single man, every single one woman, every single boy, every single girl, the homosexual, the drug addict, the whoremonger, the pornographer, whatever the sin might be, he came that you might come into repentance. And the reason that you're still alive today, if you're still living in sin, is because God wants you to be saved. I don't know who's living, who's looking on the screen today, but God still wants you to be saved. His mercy is unto everlasting.
everlasting. His truth endured to all generations because God wants you to be saved. The first thing that you got to understand is that God's will is that everyone would come into salvation and come into repentance. The next thing that we should know that's God's will is that God wants those that he has saved. He wants you all to be sanctified as well. If he saved you, he wants you to be sanctified as well. Go with me to 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 1 through 4. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 1 through 4. I got to make sure you all get this because understanding God's will may not be a hoop and a holler, uh, but I need you to be able to understand that God's will is that you might live. Uh, uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 1 through 4, it says, Furthermore, then we beseech you, brethren, and exhort you or compel you by the Lord Jesus Christ, that as ye have received of us, ye ought to walk, there it goes back in that walking again, walk and to please God so that you would abound more and more in him. If you want to understand God's word, walk with God, talk with God, spend time with God, make sure that God is your priority, and then God will reveal himself to you so that you would abound more and more in him. But let's keep going. As you walk with God, God is not going to leave you the same, but God is going to provoke a change in you so that you will be walking inside of the will of God. Verse number two, for you know that what commandments we give and we gave you by the Lord Jesus Christ for this is the will of God even your sanctification that you should abstain from fornication that every one of you should know how to possess his vessel in sanctification and in honor God wants us to be clean not just in lip service not just in words but God wants us to be clean in actions as well oh God that's why David said create in me a clean heart Lord and renew a right spirit inside of me David knew who his redeemer was David knew who his God was but David even and fell short of God's glory. Aren't you all glad today that even when you sin, God is faithful and just to forgive you? That if you would just confess your sins, he's faithful to cleanse you of all unrighteousness and to give you another chance over and over again? That's God's mission. That's God's plan is that those that he saved, he also wants you to be sanctified as well. Go with me to 2 Peter 3.11. I got another scripture I want to go over. 2 Peter 3.11. It says this, for this is the message that we heard from the beginning, that we should, oh, wrong one, Second Peter, I'm in wrong one, Second Peter 3 and 11, seeing then that all these things should be dissolved, what manner of persons ought ye to be? It says ye ought to be in all holy conversation and godliness. So it's not just at church. Some of us just want to be holy at church. We like to cross our legs and, and look all pompous and pious, dressed up dirt. Yes, I said dressed up dirt because we all we look good on the outside, but our insides are all jacked up. We got a bad attitude, but we talking in all types of tongues, and but we can't speak to people. We don't love on people. We're not willing to intercede on behalf of people, as we learned in Sunday school on this morning. Write down 2 Timothy 1 and 9. Write down Ephesians 1 and 4. Those are scriptures that tell us that God wants us to be sanctified. Be ye holy. For what did the Bible say? For I am holy. God wants us to be holy in conversation and in actions and deeds as well. The next thing that God wants us, I want to make sure you all get that. Ephesians 1 and 4, 2 Timothy 1 and 9. And we just recited 2 Peter 3 and 11. The next thing that God wants us to understand that God's will for us that he has saved and that those that he has sanctified is that God wants us to serve as well. If he saved you and sanctified you, God's will is that you would serve him. Write down Romans 12 and 1. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies. That means that it's not about you. It's got to be about somebody else. You can't, it can't just always be about you needing prayer. But at some point in time as a believer, you've got to have the strength and the might to pray for someone else. You've got to have the ability, the power, the strength, the courage to say, I'm going to pray someone else through. God, allow someone else to pray me through. I want to pray someone else through. I want to help bring someone out of their depression. I want to show them the way to righteousness and to show them the way to the love of God. If God saved you, if God sanctified 
afraid to, then God wants you to be about his business and doing the work of the Lord. I got two more and I'm sitting down. It's God's will that if he saved you, that he sanctified you, and that you serve him, you've got to understand that you're going to suffer with him as well. That you've got to suffer with him as well. Go with me to 1 Peter 3.17. Those that he saved, those that he sanctified, those that are doing the work of the Lord, you've got to understand that there's going to be some trouble in your way in this life. 1 Peter 3 and 17 declares, For it is better if the will of God be so, that ye suffer for well-doing than for evil-doing. What, what Peter was simply saying is this. You're going to suffer in some, some shape, form, or fashion in this life. What would you rather suffer for? Would you rather suffer for doing evil or would you rather suffer for doing good? When you suffer for evil, the wage of the sin of is death. But when you suffer for good, it tells us, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. When we go through, uh, go, go with me, thank you, Holy Ghost, uh, Romans 8 and 18, it tells us this. For the suffering of this present time cannot be compared to the glory that shall be revealed. Meaning that though we may have to go through some troubles and suffering in this time, when we do it for the will of God, when we do it for the glory, glory of God, when we understand that God is in control, then I can reckon that the suffering of this present time is not worthy to be compared to the glory that shall be revealed. If you reign with him, you also got to suffer with him as well. Paul told us in Philippians 3, I believe around 8, he said that I may know him in the power of his resurrection, in the fellowship of his suffering. He said, I want to know that he rose but I also want to know and understand and go with him when he suffered as well. Sometimes you're going to go through, but understanding God's will is that when I go through, uh, that, and we know that all things work together for our good. In this life, ye shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. God's will is that you go through so that you'll be stronger, and when you come out, God never brings you into a situation that calls you to be destroyed, but he wants to perfect Psalm 138 and 8. He wants to perfect what he has concerning you. It's God's will that all men should be saved. It's God's will that all men that he saved should be sanctified. It's God's will that those that he saved and those that he sanctified will serve him. It's God's will that those that he saved, those that he sanctified, and those that are serving him and those that suffer with him but also understand that God's will will always be be to bless us in this life. God's will will be done. Go with me for a couple of scriptures and I'm done. Psalm 25 and 9. It says, the meek he will guide in judgment and the meek he will teach his way. Go with me over to Psalm 32 and 8. It says, I will instruct thee and teach thee in, in the way which thou should go. I will guide thee with mine eye. Go it over to me to Psalm 73 and 24. I know I'm going fast, but you can go back and check this. I just want to let you know that God's will is going to be done. And God said that I will never leave you nor ever forsake you, but I will be with you until the end of the world. He said, I won't, be, I won't leave you there by yourself. Psalm 73 and 24, it says, Thou shalt guide me with thy counsel, and afterward receive me to glory. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not into your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him, and he shall what? He shall direct your pathways. Isaiah 58 and 11. It declares this in Isaiah 58 and 11. And the Lord shall guide thee continually. I'm talking about when you're in the will of the God and the Lord. If you're saved, if you're sanctified, if you're willing to serve God, if you're willing to suffer, then God's will will be done in your life. He says, I will guide thee continually and satisfy thy soul in drought. Haven't we been in drought? But God has satisfied our bones. I mean, has satisfied us. It says, I will make fat thy bones, and thou shalt be like a watered garden and like a spring of water whose waters fell not when you're in the will of God all that's going on in the world is still going to go on but God's going to keep you God's going to sustain you and God will bring you through one more for your hearing and I'm done James 1 5 and 6 James 1 5 and 6 
it says this, if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God, that giveth to all men liberally, and upbraideth not, and it shall be given him. But let him ask in faith, nothing wavering, for he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea, driven with the wind and tossed. We have the answer to be able to seize the moment. We have the tools and the equipment that we need to be able to seize the moment. Wisdom, Proverbs 4 and 7, wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. And with all thy getting, get an understanding. You've got to understand that the will of God for your life is that you will live. He said, I've come that you might have life. And I've come that you might have life that there more abundantly. I stopped by here to let you know, to, under, to seize the moment, you've got to be able to understand the will of God for your life. He saved you. He set you aside for his glory. He's looking for you to get about and do and be about his fa your father's business. And when you do God's business, you're always going to be faced with trials and tribulations. But you can be a good cheer. He says, I've already overcome the world. Yes, trouble in my way. I may have to cry sometimes, but Jesus was going to fix it after a while. You can trust that God will do just what he said that he would do. Understanding God's will helps us to have the ability to seize the moment in these days and times. Resting on your feet in the house of the Lord on this morning. Father, we thank you for this opportunity to minister this word to your people as you've allowed for us to lay the next building block to make us successful as we seize the moment. God, we cannot do this in our own power. We cannot be successful in our own might, but we need your spirit. Holy Ghost, come now and have your way. Father, in the name of Jesus, as your spirit inspects us, as your spirit moves in us, we want to be filled with him. And so, Lord, Holy Ghost, if you find anything in us that's unlike you, we ask that you would take it out of us. Remove it right now. Remove the spirit of doubt. Remove the spirit of fear. Remove the spirit of confusion now in the name of Jesus. We don't want anything inside of us that will cause us to be separated from your love because we need you the more today. We have a hunger and thirst to do your will. We have a hunger and thirst after righteousness. So Holy Ghost, come to more and have your way even now. Move by your power, move by your might, so that we might understand the will of God that he has for our lives. Some count on chariots. Some trust in horses. But my hope is in you, God, today. My hope is in the King of kings and in the Lord of lords. My hope is in the great I am. You will keep us. You will present us faultless. You will bring us through. No weapon formed against us shall prosper. Your word will come true. Thank you for speaking life. Thank you for the victory even now. Thank you for the thoughts that you think towards us. And thank you, God, for the great things that you have in store. Eye has not seen, ear has not heard, neither has it entered into the hearts of men what good things you have in store. But, God, I know that the best is yet to come. And because the best is yet to come, your will will be done. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Lord, come to more and have your way. Be glorified, be magnified, be adored. In my life, in my situation, in my circumstance, in my trials, in my tribulations, in my sickness. God, come to more and have your way. Be the God that is almighty. Be the great I am. Be Jehovah Jireh, our provider. Be Jehovah Nisi. Be Jehovah, Jehovah Shalom. Be God all by yourself, God. Whether I'm on a mountaintop or I'm in a valley low, God, I just expect for you to be God. I expect for you to be a way maker. I expect for you to be a strong tower. I expect you to be God. God all by yourself. And if you be God, I know that I shall live and not die as long as you are God. And we know that you can do anything but fail. Thank you, God, today. And so we bless your name. It's in Jesus' mighty and matchless name we pray. We say thank God, amen, and amen.
Thank you for tuning in to our worship service here at Praise Center Church of God in Christ. We pray that something was said or done that encouraged you, that empowered you, that strengthened you on this day. Now it is time for us to give you an opportunity to sow into the life of ministry here at Praise Center Church of God in Christ. And there are multiple ways that you can give. First, you can give via Cash App by giving to Dollar Praise Center VA. You also can visit our website, praisecenterkojic.org. Click on the giving link, and it will allow you to give via our website. You also can go to PayPal for those that like to use PayPal and send your donation to info at praisecenterkojic.org. And then last but not least, you can give via Givelify by searching for Praise Center Church of God in Christ in Dumfries, Virginia. Make sure you see my face or Lady Yo's face on the image and you will be giving or donating to the right location. We pray again that you were blessed by our service and we want to let you know by you seeding into the life of Praise Center Church of God in Christ, we're going to declare blessings be upon you. God says, when we give, it shall be given unto us good measures, pressed down, shaken together and running over. We speak blessings to be in your life as you have sown into good soil here at Praise Center Church. May God bless you and may heaven shine upon you all. Have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.